Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today I'm going to show you how to maintain and take care of your squash and zucchini plants that have been growing. I'm going to cover a lot of things, insects, spraying, pruning. First thing I want to show you is the difference between male and female flowers. Male flowers are just stems, just like this. It's nothing but a flower stem and then the flower at the end. There's no squash or zucchini underneath of that flower. That is a male flower. Behind it, is a female flower. Hopefully that was pollinated so the zucchini is starting to grow. Here's an example of a female flower. Right down there that's a little tiny squash or zucchini with a flower on the end. That is a female flower. The female always has a baby zucchini and squash beneath it. However, it's not pollinated. So this one looks great and sometimes they start growing and then the tips get brown. That happens when the flowers aren't pollinated. So the male flower will open up, the bee will land on here. When this flower opens up, the bee will hopefully go on there, pollinate it, and then this will take off and grow into a large squash or zucchini. So this one looks pollinated, I think it's gonna be perfectly fine, but that's the difference between male and female flowers. The other thing you wanna do is while you're under here is look under the leaves and start looking for squash bug eggs, squash bugs. I did find one, I went to grab it and knocked it off so it fell down there somewhere, but I'll show you what they look like. Also look underneath all the plants. Right there, moving around, that is a good insect. That's a lacewing, and they eat aphids. So you're looking for good insects, you're looking for bad insects, and that's why you don't want to come under here and necessarily spray chemical indiscriminate killers. Organic sprays are chemical, human-made sprays are chemical, and they kill indiscriminately. So check out your plants, and if you don't have a large outbreak of something negative, let nature take care of it. I'm also going to show you how to use peppermint spray in the garden because when we see damaged branches, that's how bugs find the plants. They can smell them. So peppermint spray is really good at masking the smells of the plants and then the bad insects don't come and find them. And as I was saying, the first thing we want to do is really inspect the leaves. So we're going to be looking under the leaves, trying to see what's going on, what's growing, looking for squash bug, eggs, looking for the squash bugs, and really seeing what we need to do to take care of the plants. And these plants are doing pretty well. They're nice and green inside. Some of the leaves on the outside are beat up. I'll talk about this later. But right now, and there's a nice zucchini right back there. They pop up really, really quick, and they can almost double in size in a day or two. So I'm going to clean up the leaves, um, take care of the plant, and show you what that looks like. I removed a lot of the bottom leaves, checked under these leaves, couldn't find any squash bug eggs. Only found one squash bug, but I lost it, so I'll come back and look for that one later. But the plant looks pretty healthy. I just get a pair of scissors, go right to the stem, and I cut right in here to remove a leaf that is damaged um, or looks problematic. Now, as soon as you do that, as soon as you make the cut, the plant is going to seep out, I guess, sap or water or liquid, whatever it is. That's going to have pheromones in there that attract the bad insects. When plants are damaged, that's how a lot of insects find a plant to go to. They go for a plant that's weakened. So we're going to spray all this with a peppermint spray. I'll talk about that later, but we're not going to spray until it's cooler in the evening and the plant can handle sprays a little bit better. When you cut the leaves off, just make a pile of them. Look on the underside. Start looking for powdery mildew. Look for insect eggs. Look for any kind of damage. And this plant looks pretty healthy. Let's go over to another one and I'll show you how I cut the leaves off. Now that's my scalloped bush squash. That's not growing vertically. It's a little more compact. Even though they say they're bushed, I can see that the stem is really starting to take off. So I may put that up a post or something like that. But you can grow them vertically. Helps you be able to manage them a little bit better for pests and disease. Now when you put them in a cage, again it does help, but sometimes the leaves will come up and when you're watering or something you knock them and because they're hollow, they're fragile, they bend over the uh, wire and then they start to die off. You don't need to leave the damaged leaves around there. So I just use scissors. I get right in to the bottom just like that, and then cut. And you want to make sure you don't damage anything else, and then just take the leaf out. And again, as we're cutting, as we're pruning, we're letting the plant uh, wound seep out the sap. Bugs can smell that odor, and masking it with peppermint oil is one way to do it. That's a lot of companion planting, um, basis for companion planting too. Not only do they attract insects that are good for the garden, the smells from those plants, like the marigolds or different plants, help mask the squash plant, the zucchini plant, from insects that are flying by looking for a plant to feed on or lay eggs on. So I pruned out the scalloped 
bush squash and it's nice and green no insects on the underside I'm going to get some dirt mound it up maybe an inch on the stem just cover up that stem check the stem for any kind of vine borers but the plants are looking pretty good the dark green zucchini looking good I took off more leaves and if you don't want to cut down to the stem here and re remove the leaf if you're having problems you can also cut up high on the leaf like way up here where my thumb is and when you do that you'll cut the top off but you're going to leave it sealed if you cut down right here you're going to leave a tube opening and it's possible insects or water or things fall into that tube you don't want to do that but you could also prune this way I you know I recommend if you can take off the whole stem but sometimes if you're just removing leaves if they have powdery mildew on it and you want to get through a lot you could do it this way so these plants look pretty good. I'm not finding any squash bugs. I did find the lace wing over on that cucumber plant. So good bugs are around here. I don't want to come in and hit this with chemical sprays because it will kill both. And there you go. So right there, you see it hiding, is a squash bug. Let me switch hands. And while you're doing this, reach in, grab it, and smash it. And now that will die. So you're looking for the bad insects, and that's a great way to kill them. Oh, he's still moving after I smashed him. One more. All right, I got him. He's dead. So look for the bad bugs. Take care of the squash bugs that way. Now, these leaves have all been checked. There's no problems. This is probably from an oil spray I was using as I was trying to get the right formulation for the, for the peppermint spray. This is probably damaged. This is not a disease. It's not a problem. It's just something that I probably did. Maybe I sprayed in the sun. The uh, water droplets magnified the sun, damaged the plant. So these guys, these leaves look pretty good. Nothing really on there that I'm concerned about. I do worry that these edges are browning. That can come from something I'm doing. Too much nitrogen, too much fertilizer, but I don't think so. So now we're going to get to feeding. You don't want to overfeed these plants. You don't want massive uh, growth of leaves because the leaves will be thin. They'll look great. They'll be very green except they're going to also be a great source of food for insects. So we're going to go with slow and low. I'll probably use worm casting tea, maybe fish emulsion, or some organic fertilizer staying well under a 555 NP and K. The worm casting tea is great because it's actually under a 111 NP and K. And you just want slow steady feeding for these plants. And like I said, I'm going to raise the dirt level up that stem just using some container mix from this container here. It was actually the tomato you saw. And I removed that because it was a determinate variety and it was just ready to come out. Those tomatoes that were on there are going to go up on a windowsill. And you would just refill the general area and cover up the stem. And it actually, zucchini and squash stems do root if they're they're buried again. I've known a lot of people who've, who've gotten vine borers in here, cut the vine borers out, and then ended up covering the damaged area, and the plant actually does survive. Hopefully you don't get a vine borer. All right, let me spray the undersides of these leaves with water. That's another recommendation. I have found, and it sounds so simple, but spraying the undersides of your bean plants, your cucumber plants, your squash plants, really do wash off aphids and spider mites. Spider mites are notorious for not being... Um, for being resistant to chemical sprays, be it organic or, or human-made sprays. They just don't die off, and what you end up doing is you end up killing the good insects, like the lacewing that we showed you, that eat them, and you create a better environment for your pests to go crazy and damage your plants. So spraying water underneath the leaves does wash off the weaker insects that are problems. So here are the plants pruned up. They're looking pretty good. Again, I only found two squash bug eggs, or two squash bugs, one I was able to kill. Pruned out the leaves. They're looking pretty good. Raised the soil level to cover up the stem. Looked for vine borers. Picked the zucchini. That's a great size for picking zucchini. It's nice and tender, perfect for stir fries. Even cut it straight and make a salad out of it. Now I wanted to show you right in there, remember we were talking about the male and female flowers? That's a squash that didn't get pollinated and it begins to brown tip just like that. So that's not a problem with your plant. It just didn't get pollinated so that can be cut off and removed. Here's the total amount of leaves that I took off of there. You know, a good amount but not too much. And because I removed leaves, I'm going to give it a nice water soluble fertilizer. This is fish emulsion. And this will help green it up a little bit. It's not really that high in nitrogen. And when I talk about high nitrogen, a lot of the chemical fertilizers have like 
12 or 24 nitrogen. That is just too much. That creates too much green leaf growth. Looks good to you and I, but it's not good for the plant. It just makes juicy, tender, weak green leaves that insects love to come and eat. And it's even easier for diseases to get on those kinds of leaves. So slow and steady with the fertilizing. All right, it's actually cooling off here. So I'm gonna go make the peppermint spray. The peppermint spray, I'm still working on the formula, but what I found, it's one drop per two ounces of water, or a half a teaspoon to teaspoon per gallon of water. And that's what I'm working with now, just about a teaspoon in a gallon. And when I perfect that, I will talk more about it in another video. Let me go make the spray and show you how I spray these down with peppermint spray. Now the undersides of the plants are sprayed. That will also chase away good insects so that when you come over and spray, even though it's peppermint oil, you don't want to be spraying good insects. So spray the undersides, clean off any of the weak problematic insects, scare off the good insects, and then just go ahead and spray. And again, I'm using a little bit less than a teaspoon of peppermint oil in one gallon of water and you just spray the undersides just like that and then a little bit of soap so that the oil disperses. Don't overuse the soap. So every time you use this mix and you move to a new plant, just shake vigorously and take care of dispersing the oil through the water. And that's all you do, really soak the stem. And this has been effective for the last couple of weeks in helping take care of my zucchini plants. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com. Thanks.